Welcome back to our channel. My name's Sean with uh, Soda Solar. See, I'm missing the R on my sweatshirt, but you can figure it out. Uh, today, we are reviewing a, another battery from Lee Time. This is a Group 24 battery, and I have not even opened it yet. Hoping to here with you so uh, we can learn about it a little bit. I've got the uh, Lee Time Mini battery. This is a 100 amp hour. I believe this is 100 amp hour as well. And uh, for comparison, I've got a Group 31 battery. Just for size comparison, this is actually an AGM, but it'll uh, represent the size that we are working with. I want to make note of uh, this little note here. It says bolts, bolt posts are in the foam. I've had a number of people comment that they couldn't find the bolts. Sometimes they lose them. Looks like we got our same packet of uh, uh, manuals and whatnot. They even put the sticker right here so we don't lose those. Let's put those to the side. Let's take a look at this battery. Ooh, ooh, I do like this. I like this a lot. All right, all right, all right. So there it is. Uh, group 24, let's spin her around here so everybody can see it. So, I don't even know what size this would be, this is just really small, group 24 and group 31. Uh, the reason why a lot of people like the group 24 size is uh, it might fit in like the Airstream boxes pretty well, the battery boxes, or it would fit in golf carts. You could probably, in theory, put a couple of these together to make a golf cart battery if you'd like. Um, a lot of different things. Let's uh, just compare this here real quick. <clears throat> Ooh, it is the exact width. And this one's a little skinnier, but this one's a little shorter. So I'm all about using different size batteries where they make sense. And that's what I love all these companies are doing is making different size batteries that we can use for all kinds of different applications. For the most part, the reason why I don't have a lithium version of this is I really don't recommend it because now you're getting 100 amp hours in this size. Why would you buy 100 amp hours for that size? It just doesn't make sense anymore. I, I would not recommend it. Uh, I do look, like that these posts are big enough to fit a couple of lugs on. So if you're going to put a couple of these in parallel, it's a little easier. And they do offer, it looks like, a couple of different sizes. Actually, these are all the same size, so I don't understand. Probably in case you lose one, because I certainly would and do all the time. I like these little covers. I also like uh, this little handle here. This has got a handle too, but I like this for if you're dropping it in, especially those Airstream uh, battery boxes. They're so hard to get into that this would make this dropping those in there super easy. As you can tell, this is our this is the first video that we've done from the new shop, so there's a lot we don't have put together here. Uh, they sent me this battery uh, not that long ago. Something to keep in mind with these batteries is they're really only rated at about 20 amps charging current. Uh, so really these batteries are meant to be used in parallel with a couple of other ones. They'd be fine for just a simple camper or maybe an ice house or something like that. DC only draws. But once you start trying to run an inverter, something like uh, our Victron Multi Plus there, you probably want to be running at least three or four of these in parallel. And if you want to buy three or four of them, we will have a uh, referral link below. I don't even know if I get any money. I don't think I got any money from these ones, but whatever. That's not how I make money. Tell you what, the reason why I'm doing this review is in part to get this battery. Uh, they sent it to me for free. And like with this battery, I have a plan to pretty much destroy these, being that it's winter here in Minnesota. I actually wanna really find out what happens when we charge these in cold temperatures. And what I'm doing right now is actually to look up to make sure that these do not have low temp charge protection. Okay, it looks like you can do these up to 48 volts. So you can totally use these in a golf cart. If you got a golf cart out there, there's a lot of good golf cart batteries out there, but if you wanted to drop these, 
uh, in your golf cart, go for it. So like most lithium batteries, you can discharge to negative 20 C or about four, four to five degrees Fahrenheit or charge down to zero C or 32 Fahrenheit. So below freezing, just like all the other, from most of the other lead time batteries. I don't know why there's no lamp, low, geez, I can't even talk today. There's no low temp charge protection on this. So that is a concern. So, you know, it's uh, us in the northern climates here. It can be a little tricky, but as long as you're keeping it warm, it's not a problem. But like I said, we are going to put that to the test here in the next upcoming video. So uh, definitely give us a subscribe if you want to see that. And if Lee Time's watching this, sorry, I'm probably going to destroy this battery. We'll keep this one around, but this one might get destroyed via cold uh, temp charging, but we'll see, won't we? Uh, the other thing I wanted to cover in this video is actually charging these. And the manual actually talked about this a little bit, is in uh, charging as far as uh, balancing goes. So what I'm going to do is put this on our test rig here, get it charged up. And then we'll talk about um, what happens as the battery gets full. So what ends up happening in these batteries is there's a bunch of different cells and there's a BMS, uh, battery management system, that monitors the voltage of all the cells in there. And what happens is as the battery comes up to being full, different cells will charge at different rates. And uh, at one point when charging gets cut off, one of the cells will reach usually about 3.65 volts. And when that happens, charging is cut off for all of the cells. And how you'll know that happens is you'll see no more amps going into the battery. Or if you don't have an advanced system like this, what you'll see is the voltage will go from uh, maybe 14 volts up to 14.4, 14.6, whatever the maximum voltage is of your charger, it'll just jump. That's because this is no longer accepting amps, so the voltage rises quickly. And we'll be able to see that on the graphing from the uh, Serbo GX here uh, as it logs all the data. So anyway, maybe that's too complicated. Maybe you just got to see it. So I'll get this plugged in and get it charging, and then we'll check in. Okay? All right, we're pushing about 16, 17 amps into the battery right now. And that's a good amount for what we want to do. And what we'll do is we'll check back in when the voltage gets closer to 14. And I think that is when we're going to see the uh, cells come out of balance. And we should see the voltage spike. If we miss it, we will catch it on the data logging that we'll see later. All right, we've been gone for a quick minute there. It's actually been a couple of days. Been uh, trying to top balance this battery out. And it takes a really long time. We've been monitoring everything with the... Victron uh, Serbo GX here. And let's go take a look at the data. All right, we're looking at the battery monitor, voltage and current. And we started charging and we started at about 18 amps, volts about 13.61. And as we kept going here, amps comes down, voltage then starts to rise. Let's zoom in on this real quick so you can see exactly how quick this happens. <coughs> Here we go. So we go from about 14 volts. That's effectively where most batteries are about full. And then at this point, one of the cells hits high voltage cutoff and then the, the uh, voltage actually jumps up to 15.6. Reason for that is the lab power supply I'm using. We run it a little higher to make sure we're getting decent amps into it. But the BMS protects it from this. There's no damage being done. And each of these little blips here are every time the BMS re-enables charging. And so what we were getting was real quickly uh, 9.4 amps and it was at 14.3 volts. And only for about a minute because we're doing minute logging. So we didn't see a whole lot there. And that ended up going on for uh, some time. Then when I got back to it in the morning, I dropped it down, let the BMS try and balance a little bit. Let's take a look at this period of time here. Over about the next 24 hours, it uh, did it again. But this time I kept the volts down to 14.46, so it had a little bit more time to balance. Let's zoom in on this one here and see what we got going on. 
yeah right here we were able to get a little bit more balancing got the battery well a little higher but we're putting much much less amps in now uh 1.7 amps and it's still hitting cutoff pretty quick being that the volts really isn't getting much above 14 tells me there's one cell likely that is kind of rogue out of balance but we're going to see if that actually matters here in a little bit with a full capacity test all right got a little heater going here i love these for these kind of tests pulling about 30 amps right now which is going to be a perfect draw for this little battery we'll see where we get and the good thing is we're going to log it all with this and we'll take a look at the data well we are coming up on low voltage cutoff here 10.1 volts is being measured hey bear what are you doing dogs don't paint stuff no would you believe this guy was about 10 pounds not that long ago uh, come on give me no need to get the bear a bear snack here hey bear come here here you go bear snack all right you have fun all right we got to get back to work here 99.9 I don't even know how this thing's still running okay we did it <laughs> oh it did it anything more is just gravy how is this thing still running it's at 9.9 .9 volts this thing should not be running oh we got a little battery light there but we're still pulling amps you know what let's call it we don't want to damage this battery right on the nose pretty much 100.2 amp hours and uh, that time to go and steam a charger that's because the battery monitor is programmed differently Let's look at the charge or the discharge curve here. It looks pretty good. Nothing really too crazy to report, other than again, look how flat that thing is. That's again why you need a battery monitor. Well, thanks for sticking around this long. As you can see, uh, we did get the full rated capacity. But I appreciate you uh, sticking around. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of experiments this winter on some lead time batteries, different size batteries. I'm going to try and answer some questions that I get all the time. So uh, I'd love to hear from you if you have other questions about batteries. I like this part of it just as much as, if not more, than actually installing the equipment. So uh, anyway, until next time, we will see you then, I guess. Yeah.